Did you miss me? I did. I did. Good. Um, I missed everybody so much that I, I think we were saying before the show that, you know, vacationing is hard. Um, and it's the first vacation I've taken since I've opened my practice. And, uh, and, you know, I just couldn't help but think about everybody. Right. So it's hard to just kind of just get everything out. So yes, I, I surely missed you. I was wondering how you were doing and uh, I'm glad that you invited me to come back this week. So thank you. Of course, of course, I missed it too. I um, I feel a little bit rusty because we hadn't talked in so long, but it's been good. And you know, vacationing right now is a weird kind of thing. Um, so I'm kind of jealous because it looked like you had a good vacation and I really want to do things. And, you know, I make all these plans to do things. We were talking about that a little bit before we jumped on live. And um, let me tell everybody too, if you're watching us live right now, I don't know how many people are on there because I'm not looking at my phone, but I am not gonna look at my phone until the end. So if you have a question or you wanna say something, feel free to put it in the chat and then I'll look at it closer to the end. Um, but what we were talking about, I have this thing planned with my sister and uh, I'm gonna get in trouble for talking about her public like this, but <laughs> she knows I love her. So, but I have this thing planned with my sister and it's an out of town thing and it's a uh, should be a large event. It's pr it's promoted back in the day before pandemic VP. Um, mm -hmm. It would have been a huge event and a lot, a lot, a lot of people, but I still think there's going to be a bunch of people. And now I'm not so sure as much as I want to go, not so sure that it's a smart thing to do. Because even with precautions, even with, you know, saying that you're going to social distance and wearing a mask and, you know, all that, you're still going to be around a bunch of people that we don't know. A lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. So what no, do you think about it? Yeah, no, I, I, you know, good point. So, you know, we went on vacation. There was 35 of us, by the way. We had six, seven seven places so six trailers and then my parents and my sister uh and her kids had another house you know and um we knew everybody intimately and so we kind of tested before we got there and those kind of things and we took those precautions and then we just stayed together we didn't go out and socialize with anybody except ourselves and we were kind of like out on the boat and those kind of things and while we were there um we ended up just kind of discussing something like you so we got a family event coming up um one of my cousin's daughters getting married and we're super excited for her and um this is her dream wedding you know oh, yeah. and uh you know there are people out there who have dreams that they dreamt their whole life that right now are being interrupted right and so this puts a lot of emotional and mental and physical strain on their health and wellness and so she actually had to move her venue from Southern Illinois to Missouri because Illinois shut everything down and they capped everything at, you know, I don't know, 25 people, 50 people. And she had 250 people coming. Oh, man. And, and so we were trying to make a decision to go or not. But you know what? Um, I told you I missed you and I and I miss my patients and, and I miss, you know, um, of being there. And then I got to thinking about, I'm like, what happens when Dr. John, nurse practitioner gets sick? Right. Right. Um, yeah. And so you, you're, you know, you're, you're a single professional woman, you're an entrepreneur. What happens when Janice gets sick? And so while that'd be a problem, it's, that'd be a huge issue for me. Yeah, <laughs> it, exactly. Exactly. And so while I often focus more on your physical and mental and emotional health, um, you know, when we talk about my five pillars, right, that goes back to our very first conversation, um, you know, and, and then spiritual health, their spiritual wellness, and then financial wellness. So the pandemic has a huge financial wellness implication, especially if you get it. And um, if, if you contract it and you're exposed and you stay sick and, and, um, and you miss work. And so that's that's a big thing. So when I got to that, I'm like, you know, while I love, Sorry. while I love, it's okay. While I love my niece, um, I really had to think about what the overall 
um, consequence would be, gosh, I sound like my dad. Right. Um, <laughs> overall consequence of the decision for experiencing that moment. How long do weddings last? The actual wedding piece where you watch the bride walk down. Okay, depends on how fast she walks. But just the ceremony, it's minutes. Right. right? And then it's what? It's the party. That's it's right. the socialization. I mean, that's I why everybody goes to a wedding. Yeah, and I don't know all these people. And so yeah. do I really want to put my family and, and my patients at risk? And so, um, and, and my patients are my community. I love my community. I really, I really do. And so, um, you know, I have this big thing where it's, you know, love your neighbor. And, and, and so I, I really, truly do. So when I think about that, then if I'm not available to them because I'm sick, that's not good. And I don't have a spleen, right? And so, so what that means is my, your spleen helps you with building antibodies and immunity and stuff like that. So I'm at increased risk. So I have to think differently. And, uh, you know, some people are only sick for two or three days, but we know that some people were sick for weeks and months. And um, I had some know. friends that had it. Let me say this. So I had some friends who had it and they were sick um, for two or three weeks, physically sick, but then not well. You know, there's a difference um, definitely between being sick and then not being well. But, you know, I know one of them at least it took weeks for her to really feel like herself again, which wouldn't necessarily prevent you from working at all, but it certainly would hamper your ability to do things the way you normally do them. And, you know, without going in depth on it, the first week that we missed, you know, I was sick. I had something that happened that took me completely out of the game. And I really did like almost no work and almost lost some clients over it. And I don't blame them. I couldn't work. You know, I couldn't do the things that I needed to be doing. Luckily, I have some support staff that, you know, helped make some things happen, but I was out of the game completely. So if I think about that and I say, if, if I'm out of the game completely for two weeks or three weeks, and then I'm operating at a reduced capacity for another week or two or three, I could potentially be ruined, really, it, you know, not even being dramatic, which I have a flair for being dramatic, but not being dramatic right now, <laughs> I could be right. ruined. And um, I hadn't really thought about it like that. You know, when we were talking earlier and you, and you, and you framed it that way, it really made me think about it different. You know, I mentioned to you that I talked to my son, my oldest son, he's so funny because he's very in tune to the consequences of COVID and he and his girlfriend are very conscientious about it. She works in hospitality. He does too, kind of. Um, he works in an industry in a tourism type industry and a lot of people around him have gotten it and he's very in tune and he, he chastises me. It's funny. It's like talking to my daddy when I talk to him and I catch myself going, yeah, but yeah, but, um, you could get the flu and it'd be the same way. And I don't know why I'm being combative other than I'm paying him back for all the years I had to deal with them. But um, right. I don't really feel combative, combative, but that being said, so the difference between, yeah, but I could just get the flu. The flu mm -hmm. lasts what? Six How or seven is? days. Yeah, six or seven days. So that's quite a bit different. Although it may not it kill me, but that doesn't matter. Well, so, I mean, it might, I know that that's definitely something, but that's like the number one thing that people say, myself included, um, the number one thing that people say when they go, yeah, you know, but I'm tired of all these restrictions and I want to be myself and I want to do the things that we used to do and the flu can kill you too. And so, you know, the, the death rate's not all that high, but that's not necessarily the only thing to consider you know if if you're down and out if i'm down and out for two three weeks and then reduce capacity for you know another two three weeks i literally could potentially lose enough revenue in my business to 
have some serious things happen. I mean, we joked about me being homeless. I would never be homeless. Luckily, I have people who love me and they would take me in for a while at least, as long as they could put up with me. Mm-hmm. But I could lose, I could, I could lose my home. I could lose, I could be in a world of hurt. What then? No, you're, you know, so you're exactly right. I mean, influenza is highly predictable from its time perspective, right? Um, I'm, as you know, I always focus on lifestyle change and food's the best medicine. And, you know, do you have the the right amount of vitamins and minerals in in your diet and in your life? And, And then if pharmacology is the right technology to use to improve or to expedite the healing process and there's you know you weighed all the risk and benefits um we do pharmacology and so if you take anti-flu medication and any pharmacology company get mad at me for this but you get one day one day back so if influenza lasts for six or seven days then you take this pill for a few days and you're now sick for five or six days and and so you know if you're uninsured right so you know before the pandemic we started off with 30 million uninsured now even more so right and so when you're uninsured and you're a cash payer and you don't have someone well someone like me looking after you to find the most cost-effective solution you know you can pay 150 dollars for one of the brands of medication for influenza or even more for one day some people don't make that in a day Right. Is it really the right thing for them to do is, you know, and and so, uh, no. Now, when you look at the SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19, we're talking, I know young, healthy people, while they were only sick for five or six days, um, they were still shedding the virus for much longer. So, you know, them, they're out of work for minimum two weeks, you know. I mean, right now, I guess if you look at the CDC regulations, they're like, okay, at least 10 days after, um, you know, the onset of symptoms. Almost 10 days. 10 days is, you know, 33% of the month. Yeah. You're You're out of work. And so if you don't have the appropriate things lined up, short term disability, if you don't have money in the bank, right? Uh, to, to cover. And so this is where, you know, people like, John, why are you talking to your patients about finances? Well, this is why. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and it's different than I know there are a lot of people who are out of work because of the pandemic and, you know, the way that things have changed. And I can talk about the impact on business all day long. I personally, I'll say this little thing, because um, it's not healthcare related, but I personally think we have not yet begun to see the financial impact of what's been going on for the last, I guess, five months. And um, that's scary. But I, so I know there are a lot of people, you know, they're collecting unemployment or, you know, they're doing whatever they're doing. But if you are working and you get sick and you're out of work for two or three weeks and you don't have sick time or you don't have, you know, something that compensates you for that, that's a whole different ball game. And like you said, if you don't have the the reserves to cover that, it can really put you in a in a world of hurt. So, in a nutshell, we won't beat this this horse. Um, in a nutshell, I'm in agreement with you that one of the things that I haven't really heard people talk a whole lot about is when you start talking about why you should be. Um, vigilant about reducing your exposure the financial impact is another thing to factor in another another reason to think about it another reason to take precautions and another reason for me to probably not go with my sister to that event as much as I want to and I really yeah. really want to so I, I think let me look and see if um, anyone has um, commented I'm I'm looking on my, uh, we have just a few people who are, are watching. I didn't promote it. Um, I usually do. I usually kind of warn people or give them a heads up that we're going to be live, but I didn't really know how we were going to pull it together today. And we were a little later than we planned to be. Mm-hmm. So, but it's okay. Cause I'm recording it. And, um, what I usually do is share it on my profile, my business profile. 
I, I go live on my personal profile because most of my friends like to watch. And um, I have people who are asking me about you all the time. We're going to talk about that for a minute. Nobody's, uh, I don't see any comments. So um, that's a good thing. I don't, we, we don't have to talk about anything. But I want to say this because I've had several people ask me about you. And I know this wasn't wasn't planned. We weren't going to talk about this. Um, but I've had several people ask me about you and how you do what you do. And, and I realized that a lot of people don't understand um, the, the model, the healthcare model that you have. And so I just want to say for a minute, anybody who lives in Brevard County and around you, um, I absolutely want to to be a partner with you forever and ever amen because a healthcare partner because i am really funny about my health care and being able to participate um with a membership basis you know pay a monthly fee which is far 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 less than a health insurance premium and have access to you and be able to have conversations like this with you and really when we talk it's kind of kind of like we talk when I see you in your office, and and so I I just wanted to kind of explain in a little bit what the direct primary care model is, and um, if you will take a minute and explain to people what that is, because there are a lot of people who've asked me about it. Sure. So you know the the direct primary care model isn't anything new per se. It's been around for, gosh, I want to say 15 years or so. Really? I know about, about 15 That's years ago, I actually started writing a business plan for something like this, um, except I was in a different uh, industry and I just kind of just upset with the system, right? Um, yeah. Upset with traditional healthcare, upset with than middleman. And, and so there's a number of providers, whether physicians, MDs, DOs, nurse practitioners, whatever the case may be, there's about 1,300 of us across the country now. And uh, direct primary care essentially is a, a personalized membership approach to primary care. And so the, the focus is on preventative health. And then we also provide care for acute care, chronic care, um, urgent care, you know, minor procedures like suturing and incision and drainages and these kind of things. Um, and, and the goal is to really, um, when we have to provide care for, for that member of the community, is to provide increased access, improved availability and cost transparency. And so essentially what we're doing is um, providing the health care that patients need at a price that they can afford. Right. Right. And, and so um, I, someone asked me, you know, well, John, you know, what do you do? And, and I said, um, everything traditional health care doesn't. Right. That's a good way to put it. And, for and sure. So, and so I focus first and foremost on listening to my patients yeah. so i see one patient an hour right and so in direct primary care they cut out the middleman which is the insurance company and they focus on that member of the community or that member right so the the patient and and so with that comes increased access almost all of them have same day next day appointments um they have increased availability. So as you know, because you're, you know, you're a member, you're part of the Island Direct Primary Care community, and you have access to me via voice. You have access to me via video. You have access to me via email. You have access to me via face-to-face. -face. And because you live within a 30-minute radius, you even have access to home visits if medically necessary, right? And because we know I use all those, I use all those methods. Yeah. Um, just to be clear here. And no, and no cost associated. There's no extra cost for all that access. Right. And so uh, availability is, is extremely, extremely important. And so 
um, when you don't have the limitations of the middleman, you can create a community um, that can be really uh, customized based off the needs of your members. And so that's what we do. I think cost transparency is pretty simple. Um, you know, if someone needs a Z pack, and you know, I'm big on antibiotic resistance, but let's say they need a Z pack, I can buy it for $1.83. My patients pay three dollars. Um, if you have health insurance, it's still going to cost you ten bucks, right? And so, 85% uh, of my patients actually have some form of health insurance. I just don't deal with them. I actually spend my time trying to keep my patients from reaching their deductible. And, uh, well, you know, so I'm going to stop you for a second because on that subject, you know, I had in my mind, I was going to bring that up. Um, I don't have, I'm self-employed. I don't have, you know, traditional health insurance, but I've told several people, you know, even if I did, and, you know, and at some point I will, at the very least I'll have, you know, major medical plan for catastrophic issues. But mm -hmm. um, even if I did, I would still maintain my membership with you because it's like, you know, I pay a monthly fee to have uh, my my buddy, my advisor. You know, when I had that healthcare issue that came up a couple of weeks ago, I knew I had an issue. Um, it was an afternoon and I shot a message to you via the system and said, hey, I've got this issue. And, you know, what do you think about it? And we communicated via text. And that kind of calmed me down a little bit. At least I knew that I had you, you know, looking out for me. And then the next day I woke up and had a serious issue and messaged you immediately. I was like, I need to see you. And you said, okay. And within a couple of hours I was in, I was seeing you and you were assessing what was going on and sending me on to a specialist to take care of it. And that, you know, from, from a, um, uh, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for from, you know, just a calmness perspective. I mean, just, you know, just made me feel like I was in control, even though I wasn't, it, it was a pretty out of control situation. Um, knowing that I had you there either on at the other end of the phone or a text message, or I could come to the office and I don't know, it's, it's well worth, you know, doing that. I have a lot of people who chime in, um, all over the place, you know, I have, I have friends all over the place, not not just people here in Brevard County. So I wanted you to kind of give an overview of what it is because I was talking to a friend in Georgia the other day and I know that there are, are facilities and programs um, all over the country like this. Yeah, yeah, there is. And so one of the big things, so what allows us to spend this kind of time and really focus on the patient is with that simple monthly fee, we actually can then reel in what our patient panel looks like. So if you look at a traditional primary care practice and what their patient panel looks like, it's 2,500 people to 4,000 people. That's how many patients are on their panel. Wow. Um, in the direct primary care model, they range most of the time between four and 600. So only about 20, 25% of what's typically done. And that allows us to uh, just really get to know our patients and spend time with them and then still make a, a, a fair living. And, yep. um, you know, getting back to your specialty, I want to I want to address that. So that day was real tough for me because, you know, I've been open for 18 months and I've sent seven people to a specialist. That's it. Oh, wow. And, wow. And that's, so, I didn't realize that. Yeah, and, and so um, because when you're like yourself and you have to do out of pocket, you remember how hard it was? I was calling all kinds of people just trying to, you know, to find, look, who is willing to provide a cost-effective solution for you? You know, get the console and all that. And and it wasn't easy. You know, I'm dealing with a case right now. And, and right now I literally have surgical partners an independent surgical center where I can send my patients to I have a hand specialist I have GYN I'm building this community who uh, of providers who are willing to work with members of the community to, to provide cost effective health care and, and, and that's what is that's what it, it boils down to it's just you know even if you have insurance people have a hard time getting access I get all the time hey are you taking new patients 
I, I can't find anyone who takes my health insurance. And I'm just well, like, really? Wow. Another thing, another thing that came up in that particular situation was, you know, I did have to go see a specialist and you did contact several and um, because of COVID, there were some things I had just been out of town and there were several offices that would not see me because I had just been out of town. And then there were offices that were not taking new patients and then you know who who i ended up finally seeing they were great you know and they got me in but you know they checked me at the door checked my temperature asked me all these questions which you know i i didn't have any symptoms of covid i was lucky but you know i got in there and um you know everything's changed with covid it makes it that much harder to get health care and prior to covid in that situation, I probably would have gone to the emergency room um, because the situation dictated it, but I didn't because of the increased exposure and, you know, just the way that things have been modified. I'd have been sitting there forever. I'd have been exposed to all these people who, you know, probably have COVID. And, you know, so the way things have changed, this is a really good model. I, I encourage people all the time you know, to find a direct primary care provider. Um, and obviously if they're in Brevard, you're, you're my go-to. So you can deal with me, you can deal with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you know, I think, I think one of the most important things in, in as I continue to educate the community on the value of this personalized approach to healthcare that's focused on the person, not the system, right? Is um, reach out to me. I'm more than happy to meet with you for an hour, however long it takes for you to just kind of get to know me a little bit. I always make myself vulnerable to my patients, as you know. Um, I'm I'm, a, I'm real people, and and um, you know we have just an initial consult to make sure that it's a good fit. And you know what? If it's not a good fit, that's okay. You know, maybe right. I can maybe I can help direct you um, to somewhere else. Now, right now, I'm the only direct primary care practice in Brevard County, which amazes me. Um, Shocks me. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, the interesting thing is, is so is the, uh, you know, the amount of uh, businesses that are starting to um, rear their heads and approaching, and it's probably because we're past mid-year and they're focusing on healthcare for 2021. And they're realizing that, um, they need healthy employees and they need to be done cost effectively. And they need to make sure that you're breaking up on me a little activity, those kind of things. And so I'm working with all this. You there? Yeah, yeah. It's so when I not. consider when I consider working with small businesses, um, you know, that's what we, we focus on the personalized approach with their employees to ensure that, you know, they're able to do what they want to do. And, um, and, and we do focus on cost, right? And so um, it's a win-win for everybody. It is. And I want to thank you too, because I know I've had several of my friends that have reached out to you for, you know, to ask questions and, and, and chat about some things. And I want to thank you for doing that because I've had a few people mention to me that, that they've emailed you or they've called you and talked to you. And, and so I appreciate you doing that. I'm happy to help. You know, that is, that's me, you know, um, I love my neighbors. I love my community and, uh, and I'm always looking for a way of, you know, how can I help? Yeah. Well, you do a good job. I think we're going to wrap up. We've talked okay. enough today and it was good to see you again though. And you I'll too. see you again next week. So we're back on track every Wednesday at 1130 ish. Ish. Well, Ish. next week, hopefully, we'll see, but I may actually have my own direct uh, new internet connection and those kind of things. So um, that will be. And I'm working on it. I'm working on one of these days we're going to get everything like just perfect, right? Here's what we'll do. If you're watching, get Janice, let her be your PR gal, your business consultant, <laughs> your, your strategic partner. Get me a provider and we can get internet. There you go. There you go. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. 
All right, I'm going to take us off. I'm going to let me try to check. I, I my phone was not um, providing me much. Uh, oh, Fern, Fern signed on and and uh, was watching. I don't think um, I don't. I think we had some technical difficulties with live, but I recorded it most of it anyway. Most and if that's the case, yeah. If that's the case, then I'll I'll load the video that I recorded. So um, anyway, thanks anybody who's there and we'll see you next week. Take care guys. Mm -hmm.